Hey guys, it's Dante at Ferrigno Freedom Channel again. Welcome back. We are going to watch the second half of the video uh, from PragerU about the celebrity trainer who uh, basically was able to beat back leukemia through a carnivore diet and also was able to get back to his normal health too. You know, I, th I just found this video very intriguing. It was recommended to me by a viewer to watch. And uh, I'm glad we've been going through it because it's been revealing to me. And I want to remind all of you who are watching these videos that I'm reviewing, if you've seen something that you think I should take a look at, please tell me about it in the comments below because there's so much out there that I don't even have time to look into all the different things that are being talked about. And I'd like to be able to share some things that I'm learning as I go as well. And I promise, I promise, I promise, I'm going to get back to doing some exercise videos with you guys and also doing some cooking videos. It's just been so crazy with the house being built right now that this is very convenient for me to be able to come back and spend time with you and not let my channel suffer because I don't want to lose you guys just because I'm so busy. Anyway, I'm, oh, and I can see the little bull here. <laughs> this is another shirt that I got on my site. It kind of doesn't show up as well. Let me stand up so you can take a look at it. I like this one, 100% beef. And that's exactly the way it makes me feel. I got another one too on my merch shop that you'd probably like that just says uh, body by beef, carnivore life. But I just thought I would mention those because those are some new shirts I have in the merch shop that's in the link in the description below. And at the end of the video, I'll have something for you from Redmond Real Salt, too. Anyway, let's get started on finishing up this video. Well, I know you also came out to Los Angeles with a mission to actually teach about food and nutrition, right? You had yeah. this vision of, of a kid's show, right, that actually teaches children how to eat healthy. And, and what happened there? You pitched it to a bunch of executives, and first they loved it, and then they nixed it? I come out of Tulane University with a degree in exercise physiology and nutrition. I immediately got hired by the top school, Newman School in New Orleans, to become their strength and conditioning coach and teach nutrition and all this stuff. I graduated high school in 81. I'm working there in 86. That is not a large amount of time. But I saw obesity happening already. And I saw what these kids were walking into my gym, drinking Gatorades, drinking Cokes, Ho-Hos and Ding Dongs, foods I've still not tried in my life. Mm. And um, they're coming in and it's like, what, what are you doing eating this stuff? And they're like, we need energy, coach. We mm. need, I, I need energy, I'm falling apart, I need energy. In between sets, they would eat junk food. Mm. I couldn't believe what I was seeing as far as their bodies already morphing, because my job is to look at bodies, mm. right? And I'm looking at these young athletic bodies not looking the same as they looked in 1981. Certainly not looking like the athletes I played ball with at Tulane. So I knew there was a problem. I started looking at, should I go where media is and try to put these ideas forward? Because I bet they don't even know this. I was that naive. And I got meetings at the biggest children's program, you know, every Mickey Mouse networks. place you can possibly go to. And they all welcomed me with open arms. And they said, what, what, what are you proposing we do here? I said, we need to get them off of fruit roll-ups and we need to get them off of cereal and we need to get them. And they were like, wait, what? <laughs> I said, we got to get rid of Snickers bars. You know, Coca-Cola is not a good idea, mm -hmm. you know? And they were like, yeah, we can't do that. Yeah. Why? That's our advertisers. You're telling us to tell people not to eat what our advertisers are telling them to eat? We, we can't do that. Can you just tell them to exercise a little bit? It's like, I could for one show, but you want to turn this into a series. That's what I was getting at with the, this, the, the thing with even researchers is that their financial base is the companies that are supporting their research and those companies like for instance the situation with ansel keys the the research was being supported by people who wanted to market vegetable oil and of course you know he had his mentality that obviously was a bit bullish and it seems like he just found a money-making scheme to me 
unfortunately, that's the way a lot of people operate in their daily life and their business. And for those of us who are trying to live an honest life and to do the right thing, it makes things very complicated. But I guess we just got to accept that that's the way the world is and do the best we can not to be like that. To remember to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, not the other way around. Not to do to them before they do to us, which is a lot of times what the world tells us to do. That just leads to more devastation and lies and things like exactly what we're talking about here. That's why I'm so careful about who I'm going to choose to represent when I talk about any products that are out there and in, in the advertising that I do. I can't do anything about the videos that YouTube shows you, so don't complain to me if they're showing you commercials for Snickers bars and hamburgers with lettuce and tomato and ketchup and pickles and bread and all that garbage. I have nothing to do with what YouTube shows you. As a matter of fact, I recently got YouTube Premium 1 so I could record these and not have commercials pop up while we're watching them and two it made it easier for me to to download videos that i want to be able to look at later too and then i thought wow i haven't seen a commercial in a while it's worth the 11.99 a month or whatever it is for youtube premium <laughs> one of the ideas i had oh and before i let go too much further i know a lot of people have this question well isn't that going to hurt your revenue if pe people aren't watching commercials no, we actually get a benefit when people who have YouTube Premium choose to watch our content. We still get financial compensation. I don't know how it works, but I don't know how it works with the commercials either. I just trust that they're paying me enough. So <laughs> anyway, just wanted to add that. You're too young to remember this. I want to do interstitials. Do you even know what that is? Do no. you know that term? No. When I was a kid, in between Saturday programs, they had something called Schoolhouse Rock. Yes, I know Schoolhouse. You know, yeah. Conjunction, Junction. Yeah, you learn about the Constitution. Function. Yeah, you learn yeah. about the Constitution. They, yeah. they did a bunch of different things. You, you learned about history. You learned right. how to how to spell things. You know, you, you you learn stuff. It was in between programs, and they were cartoons, and they were like three to five minutes long. Yeah. I'm still singing Conjunction, Junction. I'm yeah. I'm 60 years old. Yeah. Right. I remember that. Okay. I wanted to do that with health and fitness. Well, that would be amazing. You think? Yeah. I, I still think. But no, they didn't uh, want it because not, it, it would be bad for business. It'd be bad not, for no, business. it wouldn't be bad for business. It would it, kill business. It would kill business. Right. It would kill business. Yeah, they, they, I, either, they would get rid of me on day one, so why even start? Mm -hmm. It's a non-starter. Right. Right? So, And if you remember the one um, about cheese, remember that one? have a hunky, healthy hunk of cheese or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, they were telling you about the calcium and the protein. Right. And the, the, the wedge of cheese was a cartoon. He would make arms yeah. and do all this stuff. And that's all gone. Right. Where did it go? We're telling people cheese is now bad for you. Right, right. Instead, have like protein bars, right? right. Or granola bars. Which is all, you might as well have a Snickers. Mm -hmm. We've just been manipulated. Like all, uh, your your whole story of you know, learning what's right for your body and taking care of your body and being part of the whole media institution that really propagated all of this misinformation, I think really led you to look at this whole system through, with empathy. And, you know, the fact that you just kind of want to, I guess, give back and help people. And it's, it's, <clears throat> it's a real bummer that you weren't able to create that kids show because I would have grown up with that and I would have had better information. I want to end with a quick little game. <laughs> so, which I know is not easy because there are a whole bunch of foods that I am personally confused about. And I would love to get your reaction to these okay. foods. So you have one sentence for each of the food items that I mentioned. Okay. If I have a, something to redact or just something to, like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay you, you, it's your game. I, I don't it's mean to mess game. up your game. Okay. You ready? Let's go. Whole wheat cereal. It's not good for you. It's. Whole wheat or regular cereal is bad for you. Oatmeal. Just like whole wheat cereal. There's <laughs> nothing good about it. Brown rice. Brown rice, white rice. It doesn't matter what color your rice is. Your liver is a meritocracy. It does not know the difference. It's all bad. <sighs> all right. Quinoa. Quinoa. <laughs> so no on quinoa. Yeah, let's go with no. No on quinoa. <laughs> no on quinoa. All right. How about seed bread? Seed bread. I don't even know what that uh, is. I don't know. I don't know either. Do, you're you, the, mean, do you're... you mean sprouted bread? Sprouted bread. Okay. Sprouted bread is... Like, you know, the Ezekiel bread? Yeah, like that kind of stuff. 
it's still bread. I don't care if you put a biblical name to it, it's still just bread. So you don't touch that stuff? No, no. Okay, lettuce? Neither here nor there. I mean, it, it's not nutritious. It's just fiber and water. So have at it. Okay. Bugs? Bugs. <laughs> Crickets? We need to stop this whole bug thing. We have cows. We have goats. We have chicken. We have Amen to that. And I don't even understand. The thing about this killing business that they mentioned earlier that I don't understand is why would meat producers and ranchers not be trying to find a way to market their product better? There is a huge growing market out there for the carnivore community. There should be more focus on local beef because they realize that the meat packers are taking advantage of them and more and more people are looking for local beef options. So why there isn't more people at the local level trying to present a storefront or a website or something to market their beef where they can sell direct to the public. There's got to be something about the inner workings of that system that are that are making it complicated. Either that or there's just a laziness to it because it's so easy just to keep getting by with what they're getting by with. But I think there's an untapped market in the, in the beef industry and possibly even lamb and other forms of uh, ruminant animals. I know in some states at the very least, I don't know if it's true for all states, but you're not allowed to sell uh, game animal meat like venison in uh, Georgia, for example. I know, I don't know about Florida or other states, but there, there, there should be a market for these things because these are the healthy things we need to be eating. We shouldn't have to have people pushing bugs on us and things like that. And not to mention, when you see a farm that is run properly with cattle, you see land that is being made lush and healthy like when I look at the way Big Mo raises his cattle up at Big Mo's cattle in Dixie, Georgia, the land looks perfect and he doesn't put any chemicals or pesticides on it. He just raises it using the natural processes. The animals are happy. The land is happy. You're happy. I mean, it would seem that this would be the answer to a lot of our concerns like people who have concerns about there being too many people and not having enough food, if they actually saw somebody properly doing this and how beautiful it makes things and how natural and healthy it can be, this should be a booming industry. But instead, we hear things like there, there's no business, there's no, there's no money to be made in this. And I think that that's, we're missing the boat there. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. But like he said... Yes, why? Why have bugs when we can have beef? <laughs> have every kind of meat for protein you want to ever eat. We do not have to eat bugs and worms. But is it bad for you or good no, for it's, you? No, it's not, it's not bad for you. All right, salt, salt. Bad to me. Salt gets a bad rap because we have sodium, but salt. we need real salt. Salt got bastardized the same way as saturated fat at some point. Oh. Yep. Actual salt we need. You know, you ever hear that term? He's worth his salt. Mm. Right? We need salt to live. You cut salt out of the human diet and you're going to have big problems. Mm. So would you say salt in moderation or like whenever you want, just put salt all over put your Put salt on food. You know, have salt. You're not drink afraid of salt. Water. Not afraid of salt at all. Wow. Right. Fascinating. How about fruit? It depends on the fruit. So this is going to be longer than a sentence. I know uh, you said one sentence, but if you're eating berries or cherries, they're very low glycemic fruit. So those are something you can have in moderation, have them you know, as a treat after dinner, this kind of thing. You want to give it to your kids as a snack. Well, people say, well, what about apples? No one ever died. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. What about apples? And, and okay, high in, in fiber, lots of water, and even though it has a sugar content to it that could be dangerous, not bad for your kids or anyone. You can enjoy apples, right? But again, more in moderation. When you get into tropical fruits, uh, bananas, papayas. Pineapple? Pineapple, yes. The, these fruits are all very, very, you might as well just be eating straight sugar. What about kiwis? They have a lot of vitamin C, no? Ki kiwis fall into that same kind of middle category. And we don't need, look, we're not going to get scurvy. No one's going to die of, you know, everyone goes, oh, we need the vitamin C. We're crazy about vitamin C. 
No one's dying of that. And let me just add to it, even though you're not asking. People say, what are your favorite fruits? Meaning, what are my favorite mm -hmm. fruits? Olives and avocados. Two favorite fruits. <laughs> what about like sweet, yummy fruit? I said berries and cherries. <laughs> <laughs> what about keto snacks? You know, you're... Well, I know the answer to that one. But when it comes to the berries and stuff like that, I just don't find any need to experiment any further when it came to fruit because especially the sugary fruits like the apples uh, and peaches and things like that. And they're not even tropical fruits. They were just uh, they were hard for me to regulate the intake of. I didn't notice any real problems digesting them or anything like that. So I guess my leaky gut is getting better. But I just found that I didn't need the extra sugar. I don't need the carbohydrates that come from those things. I'm doing just fine on beef only. And, I'm, you know, I still like to get lamb when I can get it. Most of the time it's just carnivore crisps because I haven't bought any lamb from the store in a while. But uh, any ruminant animal, I just do fine on that. So I don't really have any desire to experiment. But when it comes to olives and avocados and even coconuts, I've heard good things about all three for people who do keto friendly diets. So I can, I can kind of see where he's going with that. The biggest concern I have is when people start doing olive oil and not thinking about the fact that it's, it needs to be cold pressed and that it needs to be stored properly, which means it needs to be shipped properly. And very rarely do those last two things happen properly. Uh, so even when you buy virgin cold pressed olive oil, by the time you get it, it's been in a shipping container for uh, six weeks and it gets to you. It's been sitting in a truck that was sitting in the sun at 120 degrees inside the truck or who knows how hot it was. And then it's all oxidized and you're just drinking inflammation when you have that, uh, that uh, olive oil. And the same thing happens with coconut oil. That, that's where I, one of the problems I have with those. But then also you got to consider what are the pesticides they're using? Are these plants genetically modified to be specific, uh, like trademarked products that some company is making? And why did they modify them? What did they modify them to do? Usually it has to do with resisting pests. And those chemicals that cause plants to resist pests are what irritate our gut so much. And that, that's what ruminant animals are able to separate out with their multi-chambered gut. And that's what makes their meat so healthy for us is that they're getting all that stuff out of there. But modern day vegetation and plants that you buy from the store, things for eating, they're higher in those toxins than they should be. So you've really got to take the time to either cook them out, like pressure cook them out. But I don't, I don't, have, I don't have the desire to eat those things, let alone the time to add to add all that to my my daily routine. So. That's my viewpoint on some of the stuff he just pointed out there. Now, let's hear what he says about keto snacks. And I hope he just says they're absolute garbage and another marketing scheme because that's what I believe they are. Really big on not eating all the grains. And so there are lots of these keto snacks. Look, I don't agree. I'm one of the people who brought keto to the world. It, when I first started doing this, I, that's why I created NSNG, No Sugars, No Grains, because... I, I was afraid to use the word ketogenic because most doctors would go, that's ketoacidosis and they're trying to kill people. But out of the word ketogenic came keto and it didn't take industry very long to turn that into, let's start making snacks with keto. Here's the thing, when you see on food, keto certified or certified keto, there is no government group certifying keto at all. So who's certifying it? No one. They're certifying themselves? You can take sugar. You can take table sugar, put it in a bowl, wrap it up, put it in the grocery store, and put certified keto on it, and there's no one coming after you. <laughs> so it's funny. now keto has become a marketing ploy, just like everything else. Just like heart healthy grains, we're there with keto. Wow. It reminds me of the movie Tommy Boy. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. This is exactly what it makes me think of. Right? We're we're calling everything keto and they're going and, and different different thing. Net carbs. Have you seen this? Net carbs. It's net carb of six. Industry figured out, okay, it might have fifteen grams of carb in it, but we're gonna subtract the fiber. It, let's say it has 10 grams of fiber. So we're going to say six grams of net carbs. 
that's made up out of whole, just, just whole cloth. Yeah. That's it. So what do you snack on? Then I mentioned avocados and olives. <laughs> what, whatever happened to, maybe I'm a little too European, you know. I'm, Carnivore crisps. I, I, my great grandparents, they came here from Italy. When I have a snack, there's some cheese, you know, charcuterie. There'll be cheese on the board. There'll be black olives. There'll be uh, walnuts, this kind of thing. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? You know, I, I was doing a cheese board one day. My buddy was at the house and I took some good olive oil and I kind of did like a Zorro thing across it. He goes, what the? I said, don't you like olive oil? He goes, were you pouring it? I said, yeah, everybody likes olive oil. Everyone loves olives. Everyone loves cheese. Everyone loves nuts. Why can't you just have it all together? Well, I love a cheese board, especially with red wine, but I'll ask you about that one later. <laughs> um, okay, how about Beyond Meat? Uh, you know, like I did a whole documentary called Beyond Impossible, shameless plug. But, you know, I looked at this stuff and I said, okay, they're doing two things. They're trying to make us healthier and they're trying to save the planet. Mm. Okay, most of these products start off somewhere in China and they have to put them together. And then they have to use some kind of diesel power to get it to the United States, mm -hmm. to a factory where they use more diesel power to mix it up. So I'm not sure how Greta and her gang is saving the planet with Beyond Burgers, but they're saying this is better for the environment than a cow belch. Not really sure how they got there. Right. And then they said, well, it's better for you than for me. For you, yeah. It's an abomination. It's it's a processed junk food yep. that they're, and by the way, it's, it's showing up now because they can't, they can't get enough money to keep the stock going. The stock has like plummeted since my movie came out. So, so no. So no. No <laughs> Take all the credit. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness for that because that Beyond Meat stuff is, is truly Frankenstein meat. It's not meat, first of all. It's just a concoction of things that are protein and plant-based garbage that's made to look like meat. Why? Why is it that vegetarians and vegans always want to make their food look like meat, but carnivores don't want to make our food look like vegetables because we're happy with the way it is naturally. And if you're talking about getting back to something natural and healthy, sounds like carnivore is the way to go. These meats. What about some of the juices like orange juice or coconut juice, fresh press juice? Are they all the same? No. Okay. Not coconut juice is going to have, all, all the juices are going to have a lot of sugar. Coconut juice could have some of the fat in it, but that doesn't give it a buy round. Coconut oil is good for you. Coconut fiber is good for you. Coconut milk is good. But coconut juice like this, uh, they, they were selling coconut water for yes, a while. Yes, coconut water. A natural Gatorade is what they were trying yeah. to call it. Is it not? Mm, no. If you just look at it, your liver looks at it and goes, oh, look. Sugar, yeah, she sugar. just gave me, Marissa gave me some sugar here. I'm going to treat yeah. it like sugar. Uh, orange juice is kind of different because most of it comes from some bastardized version of it or it comes from concentrate or whatever. But sometime during the, um, I want to say it was the Clinton administration, he did a great thing. He said, we're going to pull all of the soda out of schools. And I went, Great, President Clinton, you did a great job. You took the sodas out of school. But he didn't remove the soda machines. He just said we need to get soda out. Mm. The same companies filled it up with juice. Mm. Kids go to school. Now you, juice has got to be healthier for you. It's apple juice. It's pineapple juice. It's orange juice. It's not healthier. It's even more sugar. But doesn't the orange juice have vitamin D? A lot of kids need vitamin D. You get that from the sun. You know, and by the way, we're not doing our kids any favors by spreading, and that's a whole different conversation, spreading them with all of this oil and everything to keep the sun off. We get vitamin D from the sun. That's our number one source. You mean like the sunblock? Yeah, the sunblocks, the SPF 50s and what have you. I get it. People comment on my sun exposure because I do spend a lot of time in the sun now because of I want to get that vitamin D. And heck, I enjoy having a tan. But it, it comes right down to it that I found that the sun is healthy to have that exposure and getting out there and sweating for a little while in the sun and then coming in and taking a cool shower. It really makes me feel better afterwards. But I don't use 
any type of oils of any kind. The only thing I use is I use some of that vintage tradition, which is basically tallow and a few other things. And I'll put that on my, my, my head and my face and usually on my upper body a little bit. But I don't rub it all over everywhere because, one, it doesn't go good on the hairier parts like my legs and things like that. But uh, I find that it does a good job of keeping me hydrated and moisturized throughout the day. And I don't get those lines that a lot of people get from spending a lot of time in the sun. And I don't get sunburns either because I'm not consuming vegetable oils. And from what I've been able to determine from all the research I've done is when you cut out the vegetable oils and the seed oils from your life, the sun doesn't cause you to have those problems that you had before. It's really interesting. I've had some people share with me the science behind it. But for me, what it comes down to is does it work or doesn't it work? And clearly it works for me because I haven't had to use any sunscreen and I spend tons of time in the sun. And I'm not being exposed to all the carcinogens that are in that sunscreen. You don't want your, your little loved ones to get burnt, but at some point you need to get some sun. We need to let these kids get out and play a bit. And by the way, usually if you're getting vitamin D from a fruit juice, it's being fortified in some way, shape or form. I hate to keep pausing it. Thing with the children is, is we're spending too much time inside playing video games and not enough time outside riding bicycles and stuff like that. Like when I was a kid, parents would just send the kids outside and let them wander around and wreak all kind of havoc. But at least we learned about freedom and how to be careful and how not to do things that would get us in trouble because we'd get in trouble a lot of times. But, you know, getting out there and getting dirty and getting in the sun and getting into nature... Those are the things that are going to keep you healthy. Staying inside under lights like these, playing video games all the time, certainly isn't going to make you healthy. How about like beef jerky or any of the jerkies? All right, so beef jerky, right? The stuff you get in the store, I've never found one that's just not full of sure. sugar, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, how, it's how they get it to taste nummy. Like the teriyaki the, flavoring that they put on it. Yeah, the teriyaki flavor, the barbecue flavor, the this flavor, that flavor. Every now and again, and I, I encourage your audience to go, usually you can go to Amazon or one of these places and find the one. Don't look at the nutrition facts because there's nothing factual in nutrition facts. Look at ingredients. Mm. You want it to say meat, salt, something like paprika, and pepper. If it goes anywhere past that, if you see any kind of fruit juice or this, uh, that's just sugar being added to it. You can find it. It's almost impossible. A better way to do it Meat, is to go salt. out, get yourself a dehydrator. They're very inexpensive. You will save a lot of money because you can make beef jerky at home yep. and make it exactly the way you want it. And you will thank me for that. You'll say, well, I, I didn't know it was so easy. You pop it in the oven, you dehydrate it with a dehydrator, and you're done. Okay, so speaking of things that you can make for snacks, what about cashews? Are they okay? It's not quite that easy with dehydrating. There is a technique, and there's a method, and you got to get it down, and you got to kind of be into doing that. I'm not. That's why I buy carnivore crisps. But I can understand people who do have the time and the desire and the craftiness and the, and the will to do that. That is a great way to make these same type of snacks right on your own at home. Just slicing up your own meat. You're going to want a nice thin meat slicer so that you can get it nice and thin. And then it'll come out crispy if you want it crispy. You can do it a little thicker and then maybe you get it less crispy. But there are definitely ways to save money on making carnivore snacks of your own. Cashews are at the low end of the good nuts. Of course, that's why I like it. They're at it. the low end. Look, if you get down into my favorite nut, the pistachio, that's you might as well have a potato chip. Oh. They're, they're very low in fat, very high in carbs. But you're, you're right, you're teetering that border with the cashew. Okay, right? so what, macadamia and almond are at the top? Macadamia is up there, um, Brazil, which I don't understand oh, how anyone eats so it. They just taste like dirt. Um, I mean, they taste good if you dip them in chocolate. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Walnuts, pecans. Right. These are your higher fat nuts. They're delicious. And what, you buy them raw or can they be salted? Because you're okay with salt. I'm okay with salt, but here's the problem. Usually the way they get salt to stick to any nut is by putting a seed oil. Mm -hmm. Seed oils are bad for you. So if you want to keep seed oils away from it, 
buy them raw, bring them home, use olive oil to, you know, just to get a little oil on them, use fine salt, finely ground pepper, whatever you like. Um, I, I use, sometimes I'll use barbecue powder that has no mm -hmm. sugar in it. Mm -hmm. I'll sprinkle them, put them on a cookie sheet, throw them in the oven at 350. Keep an eye, about 15 minutes will do it, but your oven might be different. It might take 20, it might take 12. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye when they start to smell like they're going to burn, pull them out, and you have the best nuts. I mix them all together for football season. Mm. I'll do three or four nuts. And do you and just eat a whole bunch of nuts? I and mean, that's a ton of calories. It's not. Calories never made anyone fat. You don't care, but you don't count calories. I, I've never counted a calorie. So, ever. like, I could, you would say I could eat just a whole bag of those nuts. And no, no, nuts are not something you go crazy with because there are a lot of carbs in them. You know, there are carbs. Mm -hmm. and, before he continues on with that, I want to say I did an experiment with nuts and I went with raw walnuts. I think it was walnuts. Yeah, walnuts, because walnuts were supposed to be better for something that was going on in my gut biome that I was looking at and trying to see if I could enhance something there. Turns out I didn't need it at all. But it uh, at first I noticed that it was making it easier to go to the bathroom. But simply I would it was coming down to the fact that is because the walnuts themselves had so much fibrous bulk to them. That's why I was going to the bathroom. There was no reason for me to go to the bathroom eating meat as much. A lot of people complain about constipation when they're doing all meat or really when they're doing a lot of cheese and meat. That's I don't do much cheese at all, hardly ever. And usually it's one of those cheat things for me. But I don't get constipation, but I also don't go to the bathroom very often because I don't have very much waste. My body is using everything I'm consuming, so there's very little to come out. And uh, when I started doing walnuts, I got excited because I was going to the bathroom a little bit better, but I realized, well, I'm just getting rid of this stuff that I'm eating. Not to mention, they were very easy to eat too much of, even raw, even without olive oil and salt and barbecue, whatever he was talking about before. I just wanted to eat too many of them. And I had to decide that, well, these just aren't necessary for me. And they're counterproductive to what I'm trying to do, so I cut them out. But for some people, if you have better regula regulation of over what you're putting in your body like that, I say go for it. And if you're not having any problems with them, that's another reason. Let me be very clear in, in this interview. There's nothing you can eat with impunity, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying, hey, go home. Vinny says that, you know, just like the wine. Vinny says wine. You know, no, it doesn't work that way. But if you're going to eat nuts, you might as well have the healthiest version of nuts you can possibly have. Mm -hmm. You mentioned supplements. What are your thoughts on supplements? Like I, I've heard all kinds of things where if you take these supplements and vitamins, you're likely going to just urinate them. Expensive pee. You know, I, I, I this is full <laughs> disclosure. I own a vitamin company. Uh, so, you know, when you have a hammer, everything becomes a nail. Mm. We don't sell crazy supplements that are going to help you lose weight or this is going to give you brain power because that's a lot of lies there. Mm -hmm. I do believe, not what I believe, I've gotten this from because we study it. Right. Most people are lacking in some vitamins. V we mentioned vitamin D when we were talking about, you know, no one goes outside anymore. Americans need vitamin D. We learned during the pandemic that a lot of people who got really sick mm -hmm. were all, you know, one of the things, and this doesn't mean that you're going to get really bad COVID if you don't take it, but people who had long COVID and really bad COVID, one of the co founding factors was low vitamin D. Mm hmm. Another one that people don't get enough of, it's a mineral. It's magnesium. You know, you'll see all these things. I have weak bones. Take more calcium. We get enough calcium. You eat a little cheese every day. You're calciumed up, right? But calcium works in conjunction with magnesium. And most Americans, I'm saying Americans, but you can bring it out to the world, lacking in magnesium because we're not getting it from our vegetables anymore. We don't get it from our food source anymore. Almost, I tell everyone, if you don't take anything else, take magnesium. What about zinc? Zinc is not, you know, we get enough zinc, but it's been shown that zinc can help when, you, you know, your immune system is compromised. You take a little extra zinc and it's not a whole lot, mm -hmm. right? Just a small amount of zinc, but it's not something that you need ongoing once you're through with, you know, suffering from a cold or a flu or anything else. And so, I mean, I think we can do a whole interview just about supplements. Oh, I can do three hours. 
very interesting on all the things they discussed, the things that he mentioned that he says that are probably of value are some of the only supplements I take. Like I do take, uh, I've been taking magnesium now, the keto chow uh, magnesium drops for a while. And I've noticed that I've had less leg cramps as a result and overall cramping in my muscles. And uh, he mentioned one other one that I take and I can't think of what it is right now, but I do take iodine. That's one of the things I get because I think most of us are deficient in that. And I'm surprised he didn't mention iodine. And then zinc, I, I've been taking that a little bit lately simply because somebody suggested it might help with the allergies. And so far, it's been about 30 days. I have noticed no difference whatsoever. So that may not continue on very much longer. And I've heard good things about boron for people, men and women, with hormone regulation. Uh, it seems like something you have to cycle on and off. And I'm not too good about doing cycling on and off. Usually once I cycle off, I'm done. So we'll see how it goes. But I've been experimenting with boron lately. But for the most part, that's what I think about supplements. You're just making expensive urine because you wind up just peeing all of that expensive stuff right out and wasting it right down the toilet bowl. There's, There's also the multivitamins, right? Like Centrum, for example, or the things that we all grew up with just grabbing in the in the drugstore. Do you have any thoughts on that? Is can we, I mean, it's just so hard to take so many different ones. Can't we just take a multivitamin? Uh, I thought so. And Centrum was the reason, and I don't mean to pick on one brand, but it was the reason that I started my company, Pure Vitamin Club. When I had cancer, I couldn't believe I got cancer because I thought I was eating as healthy as I could, right? And I started looking at everything post-cancer. And one day, I wasn't taking Centrum. I was taking another high-end brand of vitamins, like one of the expensive ones you buy at Whole Foods. And I looked at the package and I saw titanium dioxide. So I went to the vitamin, I, I went over to Sprouts, a big store out here in California. I, I was taking all the top brands, titanium dioxide. T every one of them had titanium dioxide. This was driving me nuts because I had been painting, you know, a, a few days before that. And like I read painting a, a painting. wall. Yeah, I was painting a wall. I don't paint. I'm not like. <laughs> I was like, wow, you're an artist, baby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a painter. You know, I'm, I'm too cheap to hire the guy. So I'm painting, and I noticed on the, I'm stirring the can of white paint. I saw titanium dioxide written. I went, Wait a minute, this is in my paint, and it's in my vitamins. So I went on and started doing a deep dive. It turns out that even in nanoparticles, titanium dioxide has been known to cause colon cancer, amongst other things. Why would they put that in a vitamin? Interesting, because I went down, you see, this is how you start a vitamin company. You start with curiosity. <laughs> they want to whitewash the vitamin. They want to whiten all the minerals. So it takes, it actually takes away some of the potency of the vitamin. Well, are they for what, for? Just so it looks good? Why are they well, whitening they, the vitamins? They whiten it so that then they can add in another color to make it look the way you think it should look, like a nice bright orange or whatever, they, a nice good yellow color or something like that. So they whiten it and then they add in more junk, which further bastardizes what you're trying to take for your health. So by the time you put it in your mouth, and then, can I add something to this? Titanium dioxide is bad enough, but they also put something called magnesium stearate. And I know you're going to think that's good because, hey, it's magnesium. Sounds like magnesium, yeah. It's not magnesium torate or carbonate or glyconate or any of the good magnesiums. This is a magnesium, like an industrial magnesium. And the reason they put it in there is because time is money. It's an excipient. It's a flow agent. It helps the magnesium at the factory flow like a powder, if you will, to help them. The, the supplement helps all the other vitamins, you know, fill up the little capsules or the tablets. So it's just like a manufacturing benefit. Yeah. It has nothing to do with your health. I did a deep dive and magnesium stearate actually blocks the absorption of not only the nutrients from that vitamin, but everything else that your liver is trying to get to absorb into your system. So magnesium stearate is actually, you ever notice sometimes if you take a vitamin, you'll have very, very lively looking pee? Yeah. And you go, look yeah. at that, I just wasted all well, my money. Well, that's why I think we pee our, our vitamins. 
with magnesium stearate, it passes all of the vitamin A and all the Bs, the Bs are the colorful ones, pushes them right through your system. So you never get the, get the absorption. Vitamin B12, most people, like if you have a deficiency in B12, even if you take more of it, ingest it, it may not raise that because people who have a deficiency, and I'm one of them, mm. we absorb that in our small intestine. And some people, you can eat a ton of meat and you won't even get that B12 enough through the meat mm. because we stop doing that as we age. Yeah. So the only way to get B12 into your system is to inject it, no fun, or to put it on a membrane where our bloodstream can get it immediately. So you could put it under your tongue. Mm. So you've seen sublingual B12s, right? Mm -hmm. There's two types. There's one called cyanocobalamin, and there's another one called methylcobalamin. Hmm. If cyano sounds a lot like cyanide, it's actually hooked to a cyanide molecule. <laughs> so the thing you're taking for your health is hooked to something that in larger doses will kill you. Wow. So folks, if you're going to buy B12, get methylcobalamin. God, that's crazy. And I, I used to manage medication for the elderly, and I used to see cyanocobalamin on a regular basis, either sublingual, very often injected. And I never even thought about that being related to, to cyanide. And those things that he talked about that make the pills more aesthetically pleasing or the color they want or just it's about marketing. And the chemicals themselves make the vitamins that you're taking worthless but that doesn't matter to the manufacturers because you're still thinking you're getting it and it looks prettier than the other guy, so you'll buy theirs. It's very unfortunate that that's the, the ploy that people have to stick with. It's tough navigating these waters. It's tough navigating these healthy waters when you want to be doing the healthy thing. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say you don't need any supplements. I don't subscribe to the fact that you don't need any. I did the first year and a half of this diet without doing any supplements, and I found out that I could use some iodine and that I could use some vitamin D3. So I've been supplement. That was the other one he mentioned earlier that I forgot. Vitamin D3 and iodine are the two that I've been supplementing that have made a big difference. I've been experimenting with magnesium, and I've noticed some improvements there. I've been experience, uh, uh, experimenting with zinc. I haven't noticed anything different yet. I'm going to give it another month. I've been experience, experimenting with boron. Haven't noticed any differences there yet either. I did notice one thing interesting when I took boron the second time because I take it before I go to bed at night because the guy who recommends this on YouTube and uh, several of them that have talked about it say that your testosterone is highest in the morning, so it's best to take it at the late part of the day so that you can have it when your testosterone is at its lowest and maybe keep yourself more balanced out. But uh, the one thing I noticed is that I, I have, for years even before doing Lion Diet, I was up all night peeing. And I still do that because I drink more water than ever now. But I got to where I was only going a couple of times a night over the past few months. Maybe three or four is the most and two or three on the lower side. But when I took boron, the second time I took boron before I went to sleep was the first time I slept completely through the night without having to get up for a bathroom break. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. But again, it's right now it's just an outlier. So until I can try it again and see if, you know, keep going with it and see if it happens repeatedly, then uh, I really don't have anything to report there. I think it's important that before you just start taking supplements, you really see if it's doing anything that it says it should be doing for you. And we, we mess it up by adding other things to our diet while we're experimenting with something like this. And it makes it difficult to tell what's exactly happening. So it's a hard process. But I'm trying to go through it the best I can so I can share the information with you the best I can as well. It's all my subjective experience, so it's not scientific per se, but it's about as scientific as I can be about it because I'm really trying to take a look and see what the effects are. And I want to be able to recommend things that are good for you guys, not things that are just going to waste your time and money. Okay. And if you're going to get uh, folate, you want methylfolate. Right. Well, my mom gets B12 with, through a shot. That's, that's a one way to get it, and that works very well, but that's a painful shot, mm -hmm. and it's a viscousy shot, mm -hmm. and it could be done under her tongue. Coffee. 
Okay, again, this is going to sound... One and a half sentences. <laughs> I own a coffee company. <laughs> All right. How do you say coffee to a guy that owns a coffee company? Right. Again, folks, take this with a grain of salt, real salt, not sodium. Coffee is probably the second healthiest thing you can drink next to water. Wow. It's the number one consumed beverage next to water in the world. The AHA, the American Heart Association, has come out finally and said that for every cup of coffee you drink per day, you lessen your rate of getting a heart attack by 10%. So if you drink two, it goes to 20. If you drink three, it goes to 30. Wow. I've been yelling about this since the 80s. And people called me a kook. I, I really had a tinfoil hat on back then. But coffee is actually an antioxidant. It gets rid of free radicals. And if you're going to say, well, what about tea? Tea is the close cousin to coffee. It does just the same. Wow. It's just everything's so upside down. It's, it's bizarro world where I live. Okay. I'm not sure about the coffee situation. I can say that I, I do better when I don't have to operate on caffeine. When I am don't going without caffeine altogether, I sleep better, I feel better, uh, especially when my circadian rhythm is better in general, but because my work schedule is crazy, I have let coffee slip back into my diet and I feel more tired all the time than I did before. And I feel like I just got to cut it back out because when I didn't have it, I didn't feel that way. But it's one of those ones I wrestle with. To hear him praise it was a surprise for me, but not when he, when you know he owns a coffee company. But the fact that he owns a coffee, coffee company and he's trying to tell the truth about this stuff just throws in another wrench in the, the works for me. So I still battle with the coffee issue. I will say that a lot of coffees are raised very poorly. Uh, they use a lot of pesticides on them. You don't know what kind of garbage you're getting. A lot of times they're they're burnt, they're overcooked, so you're you're not getting any of the benefits of what's in a coffee bean. If there are any benefits, like he says, so the the quality of the coffee does make a difference. I know that. For me, the jury's still out on coffee. I prefer to avoid it if I can, but I'm not ready to say that it's <laughs> a health food like he's saying here and is going to stop heart attacks. Because when I drink coffee, I notice that my heart rate increases enough for my watch to tell me, hey, your heart is racing. But I don't mix anything else in there except salt. I do put salt in my coffee, which I would have thought would be horrible uh, before before the days when I used to drink, back when I used to drink coffee with sugar and cream and everything else. But now the salt takes away some of the bitterness. And I love the way salt tastes, especially if it's good, clean salt. So anyway, I don't know what to say about coffee. I don't know what you're going to say about what he said about coffee, but I say it's going to be up to you to decide, uh, not only because it's, it's difficult for me to decide, but also because I am not here to come between anybody and their coffee. Uh, that's almost like coming between somebody and their child. So <laughs> I try to tread lightly on coffee. Fatty Wagyu beef. Delicious. And it's great for you. Would you eat it every day? If, yeah, if I could afford it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, butter fried eggs. Butter fried eggs. That's the way I just had three eggs right before I got here. So, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Not margarine. Not margarine. Right. Butter. Real butter. Real butter. Frying your eggs. That's the way to do it. That's the only way to do it. Margarine every day as much as you want? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Almond milk. It's an abomination. I'm an abomination, but it's almonds. Almonds are good for you, no? Yeah, almonds are good for you. I have a company that, that uses almonds in a product. Almonds are great. Almond milk is nothing but a sugary drink because yeah. it's not almonds. They're, they're, they're literally taking the carbs and the milkiness. The, they're grinding it up, mixing it with milk, straining it. Does that sound healthy to you? What? Okay, this is like a whole nother hour. We're going to have to bring you back because... I bought into the whole almond milk thing back before I started doing Lion Diet also. And we were buying almond milk for all of our cereals, thinking how healthy we were going to be. Lord have mercy. Like some people I'm say available. that they can't, they can't drink milk. And so what else can they drink? And so uh, you know. it, usually people that can't drink milk, this is for your audience. Try goat milk. Okay. You know, you go in that direction for because sometimes people have trouble with lactose yeah. and just different things. And uh, so and if you live in an Amish area, 
try their milk because sometimes nobody lives in an Amish area. I do. <laughs> <laughs> their butter is insane. It is insane. But if you live where people milk their own, you might yeah. get a better milk there. But usually, you know, it's the lactose or something in milk that will stop people. Try goat milk. Even though there's lactose, it's a different thing. Okay, so no on almond milk because it's pretty much sugary and instead go for goat milk. Yeah. Okay. Whole when it comes to milk, I found I've just got to stay away altogether. Uh, lactose is sugar and I don't need that either. Uh, goat milk, I haven't tried, but again, it's just something I'm not willing to experiment with because I just, I don't feel like I have a need for milk. I'm doing fine with just water and club soda. I also drink mineral water, but uh, that's basically fancy club soda, right? Milk? Great. As much as you want? Holy. No. Okay. If you're a kid, yes. The problem with milk is that there's, a, again, a lot of lactose. Even we call whole milk 5% in this country. When you go to European countries, it's much higher. So it's a lot healthier, right? So with milk, you don't want to have all that lactose. So if you're having a small amount, you're putting it in your coffee, you're having a small glass, but just to go willy-nilly on milk after your third birthday, not really needed. Okay. Protein shakes and protein powders. That's longer than a sentence. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. In general, no. Yeah. Uh, protein powders, by definition, is an engineered food. I used it during cancer. I work with a lot of people with cancer. They're wasting away. If you're going to use a protein powder, the best form to use is whey. W-H-E-Y. It comes from milk. Whey protein. And there are three versions of it. You know, just concentrate. And there's isolate, where you're isolating away from more of the lactose and the fat. So there's protein isolate. And then there's casein. And the casein, I say casein or casein, that makes up 80% of what they get from the rennet. So you can take any form of it and you'll get all the amino acids you need. And it's actually good. Soy protein is not even close. None of the vegan proteins are even close. But I tell vegans that if you insist on being a vegan, use those proteins because you're not getting enough anywhere else. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last, very important. I don't use any protein powders of any kind. Red wine. <laughs> Red wine. You're Great. killing me, Vinny. <laughs> Great song. You know, over the years we hear about resveratrol. Yeah. You would have to drink like three bottles of wine per day. Mm -hmm. So you would still put it in the category of it, enjoy it every once in a while. Yeah. enjoy. If you want to have a glass of wine, enjoy it for the glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Do not think you're drinking a health food drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Well, this was fascinating. A lot of food for thought. And uh, I'll end with thank you and stay motivated. <laughs> thank you for having me. All right, so that was interesting. A lot of different perspectives there, a little different than what carnivores usually see only. So it was nice to be able to get some perspective of somebody who actually beat back leukemia using a carnivore lifestyle. And uh, clearly he has some different perspectives on other things that are not fully carnivore. But I think for most people, it's, it's still going to work. But if it gets down to the fact that if you're like me, you have difficulty regulating the intake of things like fruits and milk and, and other nuts and stuff like that, I, I'm doing great without them. And I think a lot of us would do better without them. So it's, it's going to be an individual person's decision on what they're going to do with that. But when you go full lion diet like I've done, I find it is just hard to want to get back to anything else. And even for those who say that it's monotonous and it's the same thing over and over, I got to tell you, I enjoy every single steak I eat. I enjoy every piece of burger meat I eat. I have not had a complaint in two and a half years. So I say, keep on eating meat and you'll be just fine. But take it all with a grain of salt, some good real salt. Uh, speaking of real salt, I got a quick message here from Redmond I want to share with you before you go. But I'll see you guys next time. Could we maybe get 
some grease or fat. 